As it is, it's time for the news. In our first story, markets across Ghana were shut for a special disinfection exercise aimed at limiting the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus. Now, the exercise, which was spearheaded by the Ministry for Local Government and Rural Development in collaboration with a special COVID-19 disinfection team aided by security officers from the military, took place in various districts and municipalities across Greater Accra. Hana Odami joined the team in Ayawaso Central Municipal Assembly and brought us this report. The team visited four markets in the Ayawaso Central constituency, Malamata, Ayikidi, Alaju, and Tiptoe Lane. Traders had complied with a directive to close their shops. Some, however, gathered in groups to witness the exercise. At the Nima market, a mosque used its megaphone to urge people to stay indoors. <laughs> A personnel from the ambulance service was seen randomly checking temperature of those who had guarded at the Malamata market. This market leader tells me she's been selling here since 1972 and has never seen such an exercise. My idea was in 1972. And I'm a market here. The ano pay me ti sa omo ye ne na se me baby na me di me ni be she na me so me babu a wom. I have been selling in this market since 1972, and I have never seen such an exercise here before. So I am very happy. That's why I decided to even come over to see how it is done. Yari na abano, corona virus na abano, enunti ena yesu enti. I say yesu yama yon kwai. Even if we are told to stay home for one week to enable such an exercise to go on in this market, we will all agree we are so very happy. The exercise was also conducted at the Nima and Mamubi markets, all in the Ayawaso East constituency. For Joy News, my name is Hannah Odami. In Tema, the Municipal Chief Executive Felix Ni Ananla is confident coronavirus will not venture markets in Tema. 250 sprayers wiped out microorganisms with disinfectants in about six markets during the exercise. Now, government's move is to ensure that markets within the Greater Accra region were safe for residents, and more importantly, a spread was aborted for coronavirus. Mamiesi Nyamicha Thompson has more in this report. The exercise started at 10 a.m. after a four-hour delay from deployment teams. But when work finally started, it sailed smoothly. The community one market covering 24 acres of land was biggest. The team had to deploy a drone, fogger and sweepers to do justice to the congested market. Leading the exercise is general manager of the Tama branch of Sim Lion, Seth Apia Okran. The drone is going to spray all the lorry stations we have the community fire lorry station, we have the customer lorry station, and then there's one around the main station is going to spray these areas. And after these areas, it will move to Ashama to spray some um, lorry stations in uh, Ashama too. Include, uh, we, we, we are adding the community one main, community one main station to uh, lorry station to, to this um, exercise. Basically a bit of chlorine. That's why we don't want people to be around. Immediately we spray, they should stay away a little while. Not to say that it's only a day's work. After today, tomorrow, they can go back to the market or whatever to, um, to, to sell. Sweepers had to enter every nook and cranny of the market to ensure that all gems are wiped up before the market traders return to sheds tomorrow. Felix Ni Ananla is MCE. And he's going to uh, prevent it from spreading. And, and two, this is an exercise. I told you this is not going to be fixed and lies. It will continue. I told you on Thursday we have educated the market queens and how to manage themselves in the market. It is not only about fumigation, you know. You yourself, you know. 
You have to wash your hands every time. You have to sanitize. You have to do all that you need to do. Once again, I want to let, to let you know that this, this virus is not a joke. And the media has a role to play. You also have to come in and assist. Others, including communities 9, 8, 7, Fishing Harbour and Tema Newtown, were wiped clean. Here is sub-metro chair of Tema East, Joshua Ashiti. The Fishing Harbour, European Market, the main station, which is Abu Muso, the Lolly Station, and now we are at Galas, Galas Market. And so far, the Zula people are doing well. I mean, the spraying is going on well. We are happy of that because our town is a little bit fit. So with this exercise, we believe uh, help by, you know, crashing this viral issue. Greater Accra Regional Minister Ishmael Ashti hopes the exercise is done religiously. I'm saying that uh, the exercise is a very good exercise. Uh, it has got a tendency of, like I said, reducing uh, illnesses, not only coronavirus, other illnesses. I advise the MC of Ashama, and I would advise this one here too, that they should not um, take it as uh, a one-time exercise. Traders are expected back to the market tomorrow to start off on a fresh note. They are expected to follow strict hygienic rules when they return. Back in the main capital, the number of members of parliament under self-quarantine as a result of coronavirus fears has risen to 10. Now the latest eight are to the two who majority leader, Oseche Mensa Bunsu, announced who would have to self-quarantine when they return from the trips abroad. Speaker Professor Michael Quay, while addressing journalists on measures being taken to keep Parliament safe from the virus, would, however, not disclose the names of these additional eight. There is a mandatory self-quarantine of MPs and staff who have traveled outside the country or who are returning to the country. A number of our people went abroad to do very legitimate business but the circumstances of the time are such that as they return, we need to take certain measures. They are not punitive. They are protective of themselves, their families, and parliament, and its guests, and workers, and members as a whole. As we are speaking now, 10 members of parliament who traveled abroad in these circumstances have been asked to stay in self-isolation for the mandatory number of days. Five members of staff who also went abroad and came back have been asked to do the same. This is for the protection of all the people here. What do you do on a holiday you rarely have? Now, that was the dilemma for onion sellers in the Agbogloshi market right here in the capital as government shutdown for market kicked in. Now, Justice Beidou, who covered the exercise for the period, came across one group that turned to Hausa telenovelas as the wild away time. <laughs> Agbogloshi's hustle and bustle runs on the shoulders of these men. On any day, they are the ones who carry food stuff, mainly onion, arriving in the market from one point to the other. But today, a Monday of all days, is a holiday for them. The market is on a lockdown for a disinfection exercise, and to while away time, they are glued to a telenovela translated into their native Hausa language. China film or India film so films different different different. But I'm not perceived by film now. I'm not. 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 I'm
on be prisi on a mushe station Wow's attic, they brew hot tea made from Mediterranean herbs, which they say gives unrivaled strength and even sexual enhancement. The levels needed for the kind of tough job they do every day. We enjoy drinking tea. In fact, we've been enjoying it back in Niger, even before we got into Ghana. Drinking it makes us happy and it also makes us strong. We enjoy drinking it. This may be depressing times for many dealing with the news of COVID 19's spread, but it is not all doom and gloom, at least for the onion workers of Agbo Blushi. <laughs> Justice Beidou, join us. Akwa. That is why we be drinking all the beer. What a way. Well, as an Ashaman boy, I've tasted a lot of those teas before, I tell you. They go down so well. I hope they also did enjoy it. So I hope that that story uh, made it up for you. Great news highlights this morning. But we do have more news as we look at the newspapers. We have a couple of them in the studio. Some interesting headlines, of course. Many of them replated with headlines on coronavirus. Myself and Mamavi Osabwaje will be here with the latest. Do stay with us. And we did tell you that we're here to give you comprehensive coverage. And uh, of course, following that extensive coverage on the disinfection exercise that was undertaken by the Minister of Local Government in coordination with the various MMDAs, you know that this is what we need to give you the latest update. And we'll start from the Gagana Health Service portal. And it's where uh, by the evening of 8 and um, 28, uh, we, we got to know that uh, the post of the Ghana Health Service indicated that uh, we had recorded an additional death apart from the first one that was initially recorded. It, it brings to the number of confirmed cases to 27, but the existing ones are 25. And uh, many of you could also get access to that portal, ghanahealthservice.org slash COVID-19. Better still, you can go to myjoinline.com, get all the latest updates as it is. But look, this is just the Ghana situation. We'll take you to the world situation where you also get to know what really is happening. And um, this currently is the global situation as we have it. We have a total confirmed case or cases numbering 381,620 and above. It keeps rising. Um, but look, China, which had recorded in excess of 80,000 cases over the last month, seemed to have slowed its case reporting as well as the fatalities that have been reported. And so outside China, outside Asia, we have Italy, which seems to be the dominant force as we, do, as we have it because... Uh, you can see that the cases are just increasing. So far, we have 6,077 deaths in Italy alone. And even though we had the Hubei province, that is Wuhan being the epicenter, uh, and that city of some 11 million people, where we had the initial trickling uh, in of the cases, and, and then many of them started getting imported out or exported out of um, Wuhan, there are great indications that uh, a number of deaths have since been recorded. And so Italy is stopping with 6,077 uh, deaths and uh, 3,160 deaths in Hubei, China alone. Spain is reporting 2,300 cases 
of uh, the debt as we have it, 1,800 for Iran, 860 for France, and then the United Kingdom is reporting 335 cases. The United Kingdom. Now, uh, outside the United Kingdom, we have the Netherlands following through with some 213 cases, and then in New York City alone, we have 125 deaths. Germany, though, if we go back to Europe, is reporting 123 deaths, followed by South Korea, uh, because you would know. You know, the South Korea situation is quite interesting. Um, when the initial cases were being reported in China, and then subsequently Iran took over, before we get to Italy, South Korea became an epicenter of a sort, uh, because... Uh, we had many of the religious groupings, especially the Christian churches, many of them not adhering to the protocols as they were at the time. But subsequently, the government had a firm grip on, on the situation, and so that's why they had these number of cases. But it, it still means that they still follow through because of the number of deaths so far and the confirmed cases. So you have China, Italy, the United States, Spain, Germany, Iran, France, and then you come to South Korea. But down... The, the ladder, we do have Israel, uh, and, and then you have the subsequent ones. You go to Latin America or South America. Ecuador is also well registered there. And then you have Luxembourg, Pakistan, Thailand, Poland, Chile. And then, of course, you have Finland, Greece, Iceland, and Indonesia. Mm. Well, we all need the grace of God. But apart from the grace of God, we keep educating you and telling you right here, not only on the show, but the rest of the programming on Joy News, that we need to make sure as a people we stay glued to what the guidelines are from not only the World Health Organization, but also the Ghana Health Service. And this is a situation as it is. All the red sports are the cases. You also include the fatalities or the deaths as they are. And you can see that North America now has been widely affected by the disease. You can see a lot of the uh, red spots and it's, uh, it's dominating in many of the states in the United States of America because you know North America is, is made up of not only the United States but also Canada and, and, uh, and, and one or two uh, other places. So you, so you get to find that you go to uh, Philadelphia and, and then also New York. New York seems to be one of the highest places where you can get many of the cases recorded as well. You go to Detroit, a lot of uh, the black community in there as well. You have a, 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 a lot of the cases being reported and then Chicago. Uh, just around the, uh, some of the extensive stretches leading to Milwaukee, you also get to find that. But you come down south and you come to the coast, you, get, you have New Orleans and Louisiana, many of them reported. And then you go down south towards the coast also, these things, because you have Miami and Tampa Bay, and many of them also reported many of the cases. But it, it is in California, uh, you go to Los Angeles, you know, the center for Hollywood, where many of these films are produced, the big film producers are out there. You have a number of cases there. They've had a number of fatalities also recorded within the period. Uh, uh, but it, it shows how devastating the disease has been for even some of the top most developed countries, if not all the developed countries across the world. So. How much less us, so to speak? That is why the decision taken by the president to make sure that we, d we undertook these restrictions following uh, that bill that was also taken to parliament, leading to a law being passed, being it looked like one of the bad decisions that the Kufadu administration has taken. What we need to do is to make sure that we adhere to the protocols as, again, communicated by the World Health Organization and then also the Ghana Health Service as it is. That, look, that's where we have to do the newspapers. Uh, but this is the situation. Australia recording cases. Let's go. You also get to have a number of cases also being reported. Apart from Europe, you have Australia. You have a number of um, the North Pacific uh, countries as well. Uh, but it speaks uh, to what the records are. And you can get all the latest as we have it. And, and this is compiled by uh, the Center for System Science and Engineering of the Johns Hopkins University. Johns Hopkins University.
sanitizers are very important. Let me just show them to you. And, um, you know, poor couple, you know, just to uh, wrap your hands. All right. Yeah, wrap your hands, sanitizers, do it well, you know. Uh huh, uh huh. Rub it gently, gently, but well, gently. Don't dry up, it's alcohol based <laughs> sanitizers. <laughs> We're showing you how to sanitize your hand. You know, well, 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 well. Yeah, that's right. I love the shots. Well, 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 well. It's not about my beautiful hands, it's about how well you rub them, please. <laughs> how well you rub them. Rub you them do well. You do it so well. Yeah, I'm wrapped up. This is exactly how you actually also wash your hands. With, with, uh, it's okay. No, be, it's okay. Be, before Corona, yeah. I wasn't washing my hands yeah. like this. But now I know that I have to it wash my hands. It should be, should be a, a regular. Habit. Charlie, it's not easy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but well, getting God used to good. the things. God is yeah. good. God is good. So, is you good. know, I know how difficult it is for some people to lay their hands on these sanitizers. Mm. And you know, the president's made an appeal to the manufacturing companies, mm. those who. Uh, ideally don't produce. Mm -hmm. So Casa Perco, for instance, produces food and beverages, and they decided that, listen, we're all in the fix. We have to get our nation out. So they, yeah. they decided to uh, produce. So are they the donating sanitizer. these for us? How so many, they, how many boxes is, did you bring to <laughs> us? <laughs> so this is Ketsi Casa Perco Company um, Limited. And I thought, listen, if you, if you be honest with yourself, I want to share what they give me. So if, you, if you're still struggling to get a sanitizer, I can help you lay your hands on one. But you know, everybody in the studio is already raising their hands, but they've got yeah. some for sale as well. So awesome. let me know. Let me know on our WhatsApp number. I can give 10 out. I can oh, give 10 <laughs> to our viewers. Yeah. 10 to our viewers. Fantastic. So, fantastic. And, and anything more than 10, yeah. you have to buy. I tell you. You yeah. can also get some <laughs> at Combat Pharmacy in Boko. It's where Sally Fukumba has his pharmacy Roland. outlet. Is somebody Combat going pharmacy. to his pharmacy and they don't... Oh. I, well, are you telling them they'll get this kind of sanitizer? Uh, they'll get sanitizers. <laughs> I didn't say that's a problem. Okay, let's, let's do the newspapers. There's a weather warning, though. So in the course of it, we will let you know the weather is changing. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, there's a, there's a weather warning. Amid the, the is, coronavirus. Yeah, Charlie. Everything else is happening. So let's do the newspapers and then we'll let you know. We'll put the WhatsApp number on the screen shortly. If uh, if you're lucky to be one of the ten, uh, then I can I can I can give you what I got, uh, but otherwise you have to buy. So mm -hmm. let's do the Daily Graphic newspaper. Front page of the graphic: uh, Halt in COVID-19 spread. Nogochi edges lockdown. Mass testing. That's where we are now. As we recorded 27, you know, two persons sadly have passed. Markets disinfected across greater Accra. Officials, traders expressed satisfaction. We've got a follow-up uh, this morning as part of our conversations here on the show. Uh, LEW Ghana Limited supports graphic 70th anniversary. So it's one of the headline in the center spread. Let's revive Pan-African spirit, according to Professor Kakari. Provide stimulus for pharmaceutical companies to scale up production. And I think it even goes beyond pharmaceutical companies because we've seen uh, food and beverage uh, companies and other companies whose core business really is not uh, what we see today, which is, for instance, producing sanitizers who are. So a stimulus package should include all businesses, really. Uh, government will bear cost of mandatory quarantine, according to Information Minister Koju Opong in Chroma. Uh, back page Universal Health Group support Greater Accra Regional Hospital. No rapid diagnostic test approved. It's also another uh, story on the back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, the Ghanaian Times front page now. The Times. Accra at standstill as Greater Accra MMDAs undertake massive disinfection of cities' major market. Everything was halted. Markets not moving, man. Everything else not moving. It was really deserted yesterday. Uh, also, Imani petitions presidency over Ghana Link contract in Sierra Leone. Pastor before court for defying public restrictions order. Uh, and then TUC calls for complete lockdown of country. So quite a number of persons 
asking for a complete lockdown. There's a 21-day lockdown in South Africa. We'll get a bit of details on the back page. Boga Boko, uh, Puma Com Road to be completed in 30 more months. NGO to plant trees in Volta region to protect sacred groves. Also on the back page of the paper. To the finder, front page of the finder, COVID-19. Go for lockdown if it is necessary to protect Ghanaians. TUC urges president. Massive disinfection of markets carried out in Greater Accra. Madan Foundation donates hand sanitizers to state institutions. Banks in Ghana commit 10 million Ghana cities to COVID-19 fight. 15 labs with 200,000 samples testing capacity in the offing, in the offing, according to government. The Daily Statesman, S. Lowe's, who advises Ghanaians against panic buying. Don't join us in the House. Speaker orders self-quarantine of MPs on return from abroad. It says, constituents, don't come and visit your MPs in Parliament, Charlie. Mahama stuck in the mud as competing interests assail dates of naming Baumia bitter in quotes. Um, all right, uh, the back page, Tokyo 2020, Lord Coe calls for Olympics postponement. Uh, Christian actually travels to Ghana after EPL suspension. Those are the two stories, but that's how uh, the statesman looks like today with the banner headline, jo don't join us in the house. Don't visit anybody, really. <coughs> Stay in your home. Yeah. Stay in your office. <coughs> Is this the... I thought you just brought sanitizers. Let me use some. <coughs> Are you <coughs> drinking to prevent the cough? No, I'm not drinking. You, you have to review the papers, Rola. Are you done? Yes, I am. Oh, boy. Is that how you use the sanitizer? It's fresh. You haven't yeah. moved. You haven't gone anywhere. I'm coughing. Hey. Okay, before I touch the newspaper, they've been touched by other people. So, okay, let's do the Daily Guide. Daily Guide has on the front page, government shuts down beaches, mass market spraying takes off. Has an inserted picture of a truck, one of the spraying trucks of, um, let me see which company is it, Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, you can see it in there. Other stories on the front page of the Daily Guy. Stubborn pastor granted bail has an inserted picture of Apostle Kofi in Kansasa Akodye, a.k.a. St. Sack. <laughs> I like the a.k.a. Yeah. <laughs> Obede Pombede. Money no be problem. Yeah, man. Are they related? Go feature. Aha. Agbede feature. Okay, so let me read it again. Um, my director said I didn't read it well. So front page of the... <laughs> Stubborn pastor granted bail. Apostle Kufin Kansasa Kodye, a.k.a. Saint Sack. Obede Pombede. Money no be problem. O fecho. <laughs> Other stories we have. No Listen, COVID. But this is no joke. This is no joke. Yeah. I mean, you can't defy, uh, you know, what, law. what, has, been, law. what law. has been put down law. for all of us now to follow. Now it's a law, full law. And it's not, it's not about one person. Mm. It's not about one person. Mm. It's about all of us. And yeah. we can't have one person playing with us. This I, is no joke. I do agree. Yeah, this I is do no agree. joke. Whether law or no law, we can't have one person doing that to us. I... It's not funny. No COVID-19 patients in danger. NDC MPs walk out over cor. Okay, no, 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 no. No COVID-19 patients in danger, but one has died. In addition to the earlier one. But they are not in danger. Just read and ignore. Okay. No COVID-19 patient in danger. Read and ignore. <laughs> um, NDC MPs walk out over quarrel. Are you blessed? Wow. Allah, Allah. <laughs> I've been a one feature. Back page of the Daily Guide. We have Mensa, one, volu one Ghana volunteers fight COVID-19. And then uh, let's take good care of ourselves, according to Richmond. Uh, Adam advising all of us. Meanwhile, um, uh, Mikel Arteta, the Arsenal coach, has recovered from coronavirus. Uh, Arsenal cancelled training in the meantime. You know, the APL is off, so basically he can't be training. I mean, that's the logic in it. Uh, Enugu Rangers uh, player dies running from coronavirus. I, I thought that was a, 
a very unfair, uh, but that's the headline there. So, mm. okay. Daily Dispatch newspaper has on the front page COVID-19 workers praise president but want more action. That's TUC. Four ministers in a West African country down with coronavirus. Hey, Daily Dispatch, this is your headline. Let me see which West African country. Page, page, page 11. Daily Dispatch. Four Burkina Faso ministers. Okay, we, we do know that now. One of uh, the DCs uh, in that country is a, is a member of parliament too. If two NDC candidate, uh, James Annan granted bail. Uh, we have uh, Chamber of Freight Forwarders accept the Kufuado's Unipass system. Meanwhile, <laughs> talking about Unipass, it's on the front page of the Business and Financial Times that more trouble for Ghana link Unipass as the money petitions president. Bank of Ghana to the rescue of private sector halts banks from purchasing government bonds, suspends payment of dividends. Uh, other stories we have also on the front page of the Business and Financial Times. COVID-19 hotels seek some 324 million <laughs> Ghana city monthly bailout. Hey, million. In Ghana, bailout 300. Mm. Low crude oil prices to create 53% vacuum in oil revenues. And as a result of that, uh, we have ASEP. ASEP is advising government that um, we need to have uh, some kind of a supplementary budget of a sort, uh, uh, some budget of a sort to take care of uh, the holes as far as this revenue uh, loophole is concerned. Mama, we am done. Yeah, uh, there's a, we're going to go on online to myjohnline.com, but there's a message. It's from Shady. I want to suggest share because Shady says, I'm hurrying to work, but I'm stealing some time to watch your program after I, I had you make some freebies. Okay, so announcement. Of, wh wh where is he? It's talking about. But Shady, I don't know where you are. Tell me where you are because you say you need the sanitizer, and I want to give you. Only if you happen to be close by. Just drive by. I see people telling me they need it, but they are in Takradi and other places. Uh, I don't know how I bad. can reach you with it. So, and, and everybody is thinking they are the first to ask. There are many people who have also asked. So, I'll just go through it. But somebody is also asking, how do you know, uh, how, how can you tell a good sanitizer? That's the thing. That's why, you know, you, it, it's difficult to trust the source, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Aha. That's, That's also why you need I know, a I know a number of friends who have bought fake sanitizers. Somebody actually even went to the market, the market popper, bought a whole five liters of something that wasn't anything close to, uh, to, to the sanitizer. Mm. So, uh, and that's why I'm happy that Casa Preco is doing this because you <laughs> know that it's a source that you can trust. There You're happy other... that Casa Preco is doing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this is... Uh, Authentic. And this is, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so... I don't know, but this is actually six CDs, you know, and this is um, the 200 ml. Nobody sells it for six CDs. Mm. People are selling um, less for way more, mm. way more. But it tells you they are not in to make profit. It's just because of what has happened. Yeah. So this is six CDs. I actually. think they produce six a weak purified water. Yes, too. They, they give do. to charity. I think that company. Yeah. So let's do majoralign.com, shall we? And then let's talk about the BBC. Let's give you some updates in terms of the coronavirus on the continent. There's something happening in South Africa. We will tell you about it. Uh, but on our page, myjawline.com, 1,200 people put under mandatory quarantine, according to the Presidential Advisor on Health, who was on Ekosi saying yesterday on a Semper FM. Uh, Ghana records second coronavirus death, three new cases. This was as yesterday. Auditor General suspends collection of assets and liabilities declaration forms due to coronavirus spread. Uh, government has set up 15 coronavirus testing centers. South Africa on three-day week coronavirus shutdown. Now, that's the story in terms of uh, what's happening in South Africa. Rapid diagnostic test kits not registered for screening, diagnosing coronavirus, according to the FDA. There's a lot of pressure on the FDA. We don't talk about it. Can you imagine the number of people who are trying to produce sanitizer because it has to be certified? So that's the other thing I wanted to tell people. 
a lot that the sanitizers out there are not certified if you're using it yourself privately at home and you are mixing your own thing that's your own business but as soon as you want to put it out there and sell it has to be certified and uh, i know that a lot of people who are at the fda like daily really trying to register but there are also many people who don't go through the right processes so one of the the ways you can you can um, detect that you're buying <clears throat> the correct sanitizer is if it is FDA approved, then you know the mixture is right. This one is 70% alcohol. 70%. All right, uh, it's not fun, but necessary. Give to Auntie Shares experience in mandatory quarantine. Now, this is, you know, the state is actually paying for people who have returned from places where coronavirus, I mean, it's, it's affected all countries now. So those who have returned, um, it's from from uh, the UK, from the US and other places, Italy, have been kept in hotels. Now that's the thing, like we're paying, I think it's one of the papers where the minister said we're paying. But I'm just thinking, should it be a hotel? Do you know what I mean? Where should they be? Warehouse. <laughs> I'm asking, oh, don't get me wrong. Or they should go to their homes. No, you're being sarcastic. No, but the first they, thing I said, here's the first thing they I can't said. go to their homes the because they'll said, put others in danger. Ah, shouldn't you be responsible for your? I own? mean, you've returned, you've traveled, and no, come I back. Agree, I agree. Are you telling me that in the face of everything that's happening, you're just going to go out there and mingle with everybody else? Are no, you telling I, me you don't care about the people in your home? I agree. Esla gave us an example, uh, Madam Esla Ekufu, in Parliament, and talked about her husband and how he was kept away. I mean, can we? Be responsible but, like that. But Madam Esla is part of government. So if the government is... Then so he I'm, knows that the way they treated the husband was not good. So Who treated? He, so she accepted no, the was, president's decision. No, no, no. It was their arrangement to oh. keep him away for the period. Okay. And then once they tested and the test came out negative, mm. she also shared it. And I thought this was really cool. And this should encourage everybody else. I don't think... You know, I, I, I don't know. I agree with self-isolation... But I, I, I just don't think that it should be our cost to bear. I mean, Legon is there. The schools have shut down. There are halls. We could, see, we could get places ready. But to we're talking people. about Shouldn't visitors and some of them high profile. You can't go and put them in Legon. You hostel. think coronavirus knows high profile? No, it doesn't know high profile. Yeah. We're battling. We need the things that we need. And I don't... I, I, that's I agree with opinion. you that we, we don't have to spend... Because, because we could have used that amount in. of money we'll, we'll be spending on hotels to buy more PPEs or something of the sort. I do understand that. No, but I'm ordinary saying... Ordinary people looking for sanitizer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're paying hotel bills. Because I broke Let's do the weather. It's very important. Just before we go, let's okay. tell you about the weather. Uh, this is the warning. A moderate to heavy rainstorm observed 24th of March. In the northeastern and mid portions of Ghana is expected to intensify and move westwards and affect most places in the northern half of the country with thunderstorm. And I'm sure you're wondering, where's the northern half? So uh, here are the places: Tamale, Banda, Bimbela, Nkwanta, Yeji, Salaga, Cheriponi, Ketekrachi, Atebubu, Adonkwanta, Kwami Krom, Vakpo. Also, Bogatanga, Navrongo, Tumu, Funsi, Da, Mongo, Bole, Kentampo, Kwame, Danson, Kranza, Techman, Wenchi. Boxing them all together, but there's an estimated time. Uh, so you have to, you know, closely monitor. General cloudiness and thunderstorms and rain are expected over places in eastern Volta, Ashanti, Greater, Kra, Central, and western regions from 03, 3.30. Well, what's, what, what time is this? Universal. See, Ghana met you. Yesterday was met your day. Why don't they just use the normal time that we No, but this know? is a universal time. That is yeah, used. but they should mm. localize it. See, that's why we don't have international meteorological agency, but yeah. we have the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Well, so that people for communication, can, yeah, can yeah, see yeah, and understand. So what's the time, I beg? Tell me the time. So this one is uh, 3.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Okay, so that's signed by Evelyn Adai Amankwa. This is the weather warning. Please don't go out if you have no business. If you can afford to stay indoors, please do. If you decide to go out, make sure you carry all the necessary things. You need an umbrella, definitely. If you've sent me a message for a sanitizer, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to reply 
And unfortunately, it has to be those in Accra. But if you're looking to buy, just let me know as well. Stay with us. We've got sports coming your way here on the AM Show. Who said we are not in ordinary times. Indeed, if we were in ordinary times, um, you wouldn't see a um, young man on a weekday like this playing football at this busy um, part of the Cantamanto market. What you would have seen um, possibly uh, would be um, young men holding jeans, holding shoes, holding different you know, kinds of items, selling them and trying to get the attention of potential uh, buyers. But us here, um, the mayor of Accra, if a trader is closing for the day, it's supposed to um, cover the words, especially for the items. And, but we re-echoed it simply because um, we are doing disinfection and the, uh, we are using chlorine. As much as we've been told that it's not toxic, but uh, we think that uh, safety measures have to be adhered to. In the event that we find anywhere uh, open and it's not covered, that will be taken away and it will be seized. So uh, that also must be explained to people for them to understand. The, the chlorine is killing bacteria and virus and, and not rodents and cockroaches. So um, we will not end up in the, in the day with a lot of uh, um, rats being killed. The food cults in the chemical composition has got its target. It is to kill bacteria and then rodents and that's uh, bacteria and virus. And that's the focus of this exercise, strictly. Uh, we should know that this is not a normal fumigation that we do within the market every quarter to make sure that um, we fumigate the market. This is to kill a virus which is spreading on the surfaces of our, our body and any other item. So uh, I think that the people of this uh, country and then that of the uh, city dwellers should be assured that uh, we are doing the right thing. And this is a WHO standard uh, protocol that we've been adhered to. We have the man um, who is in charge of the military, uh, the section of the military, ensuring that people comply with this directive uh, here with us. Looking at the wide nature and then the spread of the disinfectant, I think we had over 300 soldiers so far, but grouped into smaller numbers, supporting each of the various groups of those doing the spring, and also covering the various markets in the whole greater Accra. So a kind of security for the various markets. The disinfection exercise is also taking place here um, at the Kameshi uh, market. A lot of the um, shops we've seen here, all the shops we've seen here, in fact, have been closed. Uh, we find some of the sellers uh, standing on this overhead bridge just monitoring the disinfection exercise um, that is going on. But from here, you can see gallons of um, blue, uh, blue gallons of the disinfectants, you know, in that vehicle packed over there. Some members of the um, disinfection team also um, standing closely, going inside there and disinfecting the whole place, the country. Let's get closer and speak to um, a member of the Accra Sub Metro. Um, he's the director of the Accra Sub Metro. Let's speak to him and find out from him what level we are right now. Chief, you're welcome to join us. Well, we are looking at the surroundings. We're also looking at the first floor. We can't do the ground floor because there are foodstuffs there. Okay. And so what it means is that we would have to find another day to come and do the ground floor. Because we can't fumigate while we have foodstuffs. The chemicals are not good for consumption. Okay. But, but I'm, I'm sure the market women were informed. So what really um, happened? Yes, it's a bit technical because when they move their food stuff, where do they take them? Uh -huh. That's a challenge. So after we finish the first floor, I mean, with approval from uh, the mayor uh, and then EPA, then they will okay the second phase of the exercise where we would move their food stuff. The Tuesday market here um, sees a beehive of activity um, every weekday, but today is quite different as the market um, is empty with no activity whatsoever. Just some minutes ago, the disinfection team left here after um, spraying this market. What we've witnessed here, um, however, is the different layers of bulletin bags the market women have used to protect. Kufuadu said we are not in ordinary times. Indeed, if we were in ordinary times, um, you wouldn't see um, young men on a weekday like this playing football 
are this busy um, part of the Cantamanto market. What you would have seen um, possibly uh, would be um, young men holding jeans, holding shoes, holding different you know, kinds of items, selling them and trying to get the attention of potential uh, buyers. But as here, um, the mayor of Accra, if a trader is closing for the day, it's supposed to um, cover the words, especially for the items. And, but we re-echo it simply because um, we are doing disinfection and the, uh, we are using chlorine. As much as we've been told that it's not toxic, but uh, we think that uh, safety measures have to be adhered to. In the event that we find anywhere uh, open and it's not covered, that will be taken away and it will be seized. So uh, that also must be explained to people for them to understand. The, the chlorine is killing bacteria and virus and, and not rodents and cockroaches. So uh, we will not end up in the, in the day with a lot of uh, um, rats being killed. The food cults in the chemical composition has got its target. You should kill bacteria and then rodents and that's uh, bacteria and virus. And that's the focus of this exercise, strictly. Uh, we should know that this is not a normal fumigation that we do within the market every quarter to make sure that um, we fumigate the market. This is to kill a virus which is spreading on the surfaces of our, our body and any other item. So uh, I think that the people of this uh, country and then that of the uh, city dwellers should be assured that uh, we are doing the right thing. And this is a WHO standard uh, protocol that we've been adhered to. We have the man um, who is in charge of the military, uh, the section of the military, ensuring that people comply with this directive uh, here with us. Looking at the wide nature and then the spread of the disinfectant, I think we had over 300 soldiers so far, but grouped into smaller numbers, supporting each of the various groups of those doing the spring and also covering the various markets in the whole Greater Accra. So a kind of security for the various markets. The disinfection exercise is also taking place here um, at the Kameshi uh, market. A lot of the um, shops we've seen here, all the shops we've seen here, in fact, have been closed. Uh, we find some of the sellers uh, standing on this overhead bridge just monitoring the disinfection exercise um, that is going on. But from here, you can see gallons of um, blue, uh, blue gallons of the disinfectants, you know, in that vehicle parked over there. Some members of the um, disinfection team also um, standing closely, going inside there and disinfecting the whole place, the country. Let's get closer and speak to um, a member of the Accra Sub Metro. Um, he's the director of the Accra Sub Metro. Let's speak to him and find out from him what level we are right now. Chief, you're welcome to join us. Well, we are looking at the surroundings. We're also looking at the first floor. We can't do the ground floor because there are foodstuffs there. Okay. And so what it means is that we would have to find another day to come and do the ground floor. Because we can't fumigate while we have foodstuffs. The chemicals are not good for consumption. Okay. But, but I'm sure the market women were informed. So what really um, happened? Yes, it's a bit technical because when they move their food stuff, where do they take them? Uh -huh. That's a challenge. So after we finish the first floor, I mean with approval from uh, the mayor uh, and then EPA, then they will okay the second phase of the exercise where we would move their food stuff. The Tuesday market here um, sees a beehive of activity um, every weekday, but today is quite different as the market uh, is empty with no activity whatsoever. Just some minutes ago, the disinfection team left here after um, spraying this market. What we've witnessed here, um, however, is the different layers of polythene bags the market women have used to protect um, their wares um, here. I've been speaking to the head of the Ablikuma South Emergency Response Team here, the head of the ambulance unit here, and he's been explaining to me what their role is in this exercise. We are supporting the military and the uh, disinfecting team in case there is any emergency. We are on standby so that we can give medical coverage. Yeah, so that is why we are here. Okay, okay. So far, have you have you had? Uh, so far, has there been a situation where you you would have to be called in to provide any of that? Oh, currently everything is cool. We went round and 
uh, with the team whilst they were doing the fumigation mm. through Agbo Bloshi and then some of the team have gone to the other sector and then we have come back to complete uh, the disinfection in uh, Tuesday market here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So this was the activity pretty much uh, in the market here in the Greater Accra region yesterday. Uh, we got some questions, but what is your own follow-up after yesterday's exercise? We've got the Member of Parliament, Pueku Apim South, who's also Deputy Local Government Rural Development Minister. Ms. Obi Amwa is my guest. So please send your questions through, send us WhatsApp messages. We'll activate the phone lines as well so that you can give us a call. This is uh, a follow-up of yesterday's exercise. So what's going to happen in the rest of the country? Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning for having me. Um, and of course, we did this exercise clarify. Was it because of coronavirus? Well, yes, partly because of coronavirus. Um, first, I have to commend all of us. All of us meaning the ministry, MMD, CIS, the media, the military, mass prayers, the market queens and the market people. All of us. Yesterday it went very well. It went very well because I think for for various reasons we felt that this has to be done. And you're asking whether it's because of the coronavirus. Mm. It is in the sense that we decided to do mass education and then awareness program. And in doing that we also decided to give out items like Veronica Bakes sanitizers, tissue, soap, um, dustbins, especially for the markets. And then we met them, the queens especially, in groups, and then decided that after all this um, education and donation, we could as well look at the major markets and do disinfection. So that's what happened yesterday. It went very well. Uh, it exceeded our expectations especially with the military getting involved and the media giving live coverage. It really um, showed to the whole world that we were indeed serious about this matter, which mm. is really a serious matter. Sometimes when I'm leaving home, um, those at home <laughs> want to know when I will stay home because everybody is scared. And if you watch TV across the world, you get to be more scared. Mm. Uh, established powerful nations. Mm. They are on their knees. And some are now thinking of looking for trillions for the nation to survive. We cannot talk about trillions. The best thing is to prevent some of these things. And then if yesterday was at least a lockdown in the central business district and markets, it showed what we can do together. And I think this should be the way forward. Of course, the ultimate should be the lockdown with all its consequences. But for now, that's the bit we are doing, mm. especially after the president had given directives. Already all the districts have started something. In fact, they post every day what they are doing. But we thought we could, at the center, start a massive thing for everybody to get involved, involved and on board. So this would go around <coughs> the rest of the country. What's the plan like? Hopefully, we've earmarked all the regions, but of course, it will depend on what the, um, the president and his team will say. If for any reason a decision is taken that there should be a lockdown, then we have to maybe adjust the situation. But we've drawn a program for the whole country, and we're hoping that we'll get the resources and personnel to be able to carry it out mm. as quickly as possible. Okay. So in the absence of any major decision, yes. what's going to happen? Like, where will this exercise go next? In the absence of any major decision, we're hoping to hit Ashanti as quickly as possible. Um, tomorrow is the National Fasting and Prayer Day. Mm. So tomorrow is out. But if we are well prepared, we get the, all the teams ready. By Thursday, we should hit Kumasi especially, and then some major towns in Ashanti. And because it's quite big, 
and spread out more than Accra, probably two days in Ashanti. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we used one day to do the entire Accra? Yes. Yesterday was just for the whole of Accra. In the afternoon and the evening, we were supposed to be cleaning up so that today the market women could go back to work. Because this also exposed the filth in the market. Yes. And that alone could kill us. We're running away from coronavirus. Yes. But there's a lot more even in the market. That's certainly. That is the issue. And some of them were saying that they hadn't seen this for a long time, which means that we should really devote some time and resources to be doing this. For the market women themselves, they should devote some days to do some cleanup and then call for support. And but why sure. can't we get the ministry to do this? Well, just um, as you spearheaded this, let's do it every once every two weeks or every month or something like that. That that would be same force. There's the military. There we saw yesterday. We saw lots of agencies. Everybody coming down for one course. Why can't we do this? That would be the ideal thing. But of course, we need resources. We cannot just think that moving in is doesn't incur or doesn't demand some extra funding. And the funding is very critical. No, no institution will just say that we're doing it for you. You have to look for the resources. And we have to plan it to be able to do it well. Otherwise, um, it becomes a nine-day wonder. You start mm -hmm. a few weeks, you've stopped, and it's even worse. So it's good. Uh, probably between us and the other ministries, including Defense, who came on board, and then even um, sanitation and water resources, or other ministries. This is probably an occasion, an opportunity for us to plan and plan well and make it a regular thing when it comes to these markets. So this is possible? It would just require resources? Certainly it's possible. Certainly it's possible. You know, the previous administration used to have such situation, but um, there was a situation where they would lock down the whole ministry and maybe go to one region, a regional capital, and spend days, but... That's for the national sanitation exercises. Yes, but this is more massive than that because of the implications and because of what we are facing. But what I see even with the National Sanitation Day exercises, because it's not backed by a certain force, yes. I, I guess gradually people just lost interest. Yes, people... Everybody wants to be whipped in line. Yeah, people decided on a Saturday whether they could be bothered or they would go and do their own thing. Those who would go and walk on the mountains who would go and walk on the mountains mm. and then just forget about anything. It was more or less a compulsory thing. Even though, I mean, once it's about cleanliness, it's a very important thing. It, it, it wasn't getting on as positively as you, it was supposed to be. And if we have to do it, we have to do it well. So can the ministry sustain this with the resources you have? Sustain what we want to do. With this exercise, what, you, um, what you've done? Because we're asking for it to be replicated. We're asking yeah. for it to be continuous. Yes, we need, we need support. Uh, some who are ready to volunteer or uh, give us some resources. But the government itself should also come in. Remember the president said 100 million have been set aside, 100 million dollars. But the 100 million dollars is, is there's so much pressure on the 100 million dollars. But we need to get testing kits, mm. we need to get masks, we need to get even centers ready, places where the quarantine should go on. There are a lot of things that we need for the 100 million. And so it's a drop in the ocean. And for us, if they have to give us anything, it will not be much. So yesterday's exercise came from the 100 million? No, not that. We, we, what, we have informed the government. The government is aware. We are saying that we need support. The government said we're looking at it. We'll give you some support. And then we're also looking at our resources. Um, so as we speak, we haven't paid for it yesterday. So, it's really, so when the time comes for the bill to be paid, it has to be looked for somewhere, whether within us or mm. the government coming in. Yes. It may be too early, but do we know how much we've spent in Greater Accra alone? Um, it may be too early. Too early in the sense that for this kind of exercise, you need to undertake it and then audit before you say that this is exactly how much and this is how much you're ready to pay. You may guess and put some figures together, but 
we really want to see that this is exactly what happened and even how many items we're able to um, distribute mm. so that after counting you then say that indeed this is how much we owe so let's look forward after the exercise mm. the markets are open <clears throat> today the women are back yes we because what we're doing with the coronavirus is like a continuous thing you yes. have to keep the hygiene yes so w what new would we see them exhibit today well we expect that after we've given them some items like the veronica backers where you have water you can wash your hands and sanitizers we expect them to be using those things at least for people to know that they are conscious and aware of what is going on mm. and they are also um, playing their part and then the, the social distancing if we even discussed with them and then some were agreeing with us that it should be possible for some of them to stay at home on some days and then others will be going so we they should be alternating so okay. that you don't have a congested place but as to how you're going to also regulate those who come in is a challenge otherwise we expect them to um follow social distancing in a way in the sense that if 100 people have to come and sell they will end up maybe 50 people coming today another 50 tomorrow hmm. or today. that's going to be hard you, you know what happened uh, on saturday yeah. when the news went around that the markets will not be open on monday in fact people were anticipating that hmm. the president was going to announce a lockdown yeah. so a lot of people went out to the market markets, Medina yes. was choked from about 6 a.m even before 6 a.m everybody was till very dying. late hmm. exactly hmm. And somebody said, if there was one person with the virus, everybody else would have gotten it. Because people were really, yeah, really close to Jammed that. and packed. The, that is the situation. And indeed, elsewhere where they've gone very far with their lockdown, shops are empty. Panic buying, you see everybody loading more than he mm. requires because he doesn't know when he can come out again. So that is the other side that we need to look at. But if it happens that we have to go that way we will spend a day or two scrambling and then panic buying and then everybody goes home and the streets will be empty but for essential services so that's what we have to look at mm. but i i saw and heard that the weekend was very hectic mm. because we had announced that monday markets will be closed exactly mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so so they're discussing it yeah. how to do some kind of rotational schedule in the market yes. the people who are selling yes okay yes that's that's the arrangement we came to with them and they really they, they bought into the idea but they those are the leaders they need to sit down with their people and then arrange and agree that this can work so that at least we reduce the congestion do you get the sense that they understand this whole virus and the implications and what's happening elsewhere well uh, i wouldn't say perfectly because a lot of people are taking things for granted you see people even saying that they've taken some appetite so they they are immune from the virus <laughs> and the reports we get from the district some of them are not too palatable for instance you see a bus loaded with people sitting on people's laps and then telling you they are going to the beach in some of these reports that ended up with Ghana tourism authority saying that all beaches have been closed mm. because people were behaving as if life was normal and then that if we hadn't hit them or their homes then it's yes, it's a phantom thing. So we really need to, uh, other nations thought business could be as usual. And now they've gone to the extreme. And for us, <laughs> if it hits us, it's even going to be worse than this. Of, of course, the government is making serious efforts. If you believe every 6 p.m., they meet the president chairs uh, COVID-19 <laughs> meeting to be able to see how we can still prepare. That's how come even all our borders have been closed. And other nations, they are just taking their citizens away. They charter flights and come for their citizens. Mm. Now you can't come in, you can't go the normal way. So, there are not normal times. And for you, the media, probably you have to do something that will shock the nation that we need to really sit up. 
What could that be? We're showing more of the things happening outside. If you see how coffins have been lined up in Italy, and the, the head of state crying and literally giving up that there's very little he now can do, he's now depending on God, then you know that indeed it can happen to all of us. Probably we have to show things for people to know that um, it's not as easy as possible. Thankfully in Ghana, yeah. You have. I'm Yesterday we kept showing the because that's a that's a story also on my mind. Yeah. Pictures of people yeah. not being able to breathe. Beef. I mean, it's a terrible disease. Yes. Very helpless. Yes. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It's but probably uh, maybe I may be wrong, but I think for the youth, a lot think that it's it's not for them. Mm. Maybe for the aged and then even those outside or the rich who are able to go in and come out. We, we need to do more and um, people should even be ready that if we have to save ourselves, the stay home will be a composite thing. People should make up their minds mm -hmm. so that it will not be seen as other things. Otherwise, some are losing businesses and they even don't understand why they should lose business or why things are not moving the way they should move. Some may even blame government for what is happening, but it's not a government thing. And no government will wish that this will, should happen. Because the economic impact could be massive, and it will, the effect will be for years, not for only one year or some yeah. months. So. Well, I have the Deputy Local Government's Rural Development Minister. They spearheaded yesterday's exercise with the disinfection of the markets. If you've got any suggestions and ideas for the ministry, I guess this is a good time. You can pass it on if you have any comments following the exercise. If you have any ideas you think you can share, send me a WhatsApp message. The number will be on the screen. And you can also give me a call on 0302 or 202 uh, uh, the, the market women. Mm. Well, it's not only women who are in the market. So the men and women who are in the yeah. market. Would we be policing them going forward to ensure that they're doing the right thing? Well, then even yesterday, some of the lorry parks were also um, affected. More or less, they also uh, had a disinfection that they, they carried out. Um, policing probably is, is a strong word, but isn't we need that to... The, isn't that the language that we understand? We know As if for, you don't do it, something will happen. Then everybody... Yes, that, that would then depend on the president and the government coming out that these are the rules. But we've passed the bill, the position of restrictions um, act is now in place. So the president has certain powers that he can use. And then we have even prescribed uh, sanctions uh, for those who flout what the president has uh, provided under the executive instrument. So when these things are in place, but the challenge is that in where was it Italy or Spain? Seventy thousand people were arrested over days on mm -hmm. the streets. Where do you put them? Mm. Are you going to put them in prison for flouting this and then going to compound the problem there? Or do you send them home and then lock them up that they should not come out again? Oh, those are the options that we have to look at. Probably we have to start looking for padlocks to <laughs> lock people in their homes when it's it comes to that point. It's an impossible situation. We need individuals to be responsible. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if we were all responsible, we couldn't have been in yeah. some situations. Let's go to the phone lines. Richard is in Enyinem. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Mama Ri. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing very great. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Let's hear you. Yes, um, I think you guys are doing a great job and we are all adhering to the directives given by the president and then the district in, in general. But I'm suggesting that, if possible, um, why don't we have like a week lockdown? Because I'm thinking that um, our focus, our attention has been on Accra. But people are traveling. We are using VIPs and this photos. So why don't we give it a try? Let's say about a week lockdown so that there will be no movement. People should stay at where they are. Though it's going to be very, very difficult. So that those who are having the viruses, probably it will manifest. It will come out 
for us to see because our session has been on Accra and it's Accra alone. But in my area here, recently, about two, three days ago, someone was showing symptoms of it and that person has been carried away. So that is my suggestion. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very well. Great suggestion. Thank you, Richard. I'll bounce it off uh, uh, the Deputy Minister. Okay. Jojo, I lost you. Kindly give us a call again. 0302211692. This is definitely beyond the ministry, yes. but what do you make of it? Well, lockdown. Lockdown is the ultimate. Of course, we should be ready for the consequences. Um, lockdown is not as easy as uh, people see it. I mean, everything more or less shuts down. Mm -hmm including social services. And you even wonder whether will the police also be equipped enough to even um, be involved in the lockdown. There's a video, not to cut you. Mm -hmm. There's a video of a police mm -hmm. woman asking for somebody's license. Yes, and the person yes. just relaxes and says, sanitize your hands yes, and I'll, I'll give you my <laughs> license. And, and the woman looked it. helpless. I felt so bad. <laughs> she yeah. looked helpless. So, so that's what it is. Uh, medical officers, even the TUC has come in, and then ordinary people are coming in that there should be a lockdown. Mm. I'm sure sooner or later a decision will have to be taken. But as of the last time the president spoke, he hadn't um, come to that option that we, mm. sh we should have a lockdown. Of course, all our borders are closed. I'm sure when we monitor what is going on, Probably that would be the option, especially Ghanaians not showing that they really feel the, the heat. Mm. Let's speak to Clement. Clement is calling for Mata Heko. Clement, good morning. Morning. Um, great job you guys are doing. Um, is there a possibility you could ask the Honorable Deputy Minister that uh, can we have a formal structure of communication? When you say because formal the, structure, break it down. Um, our people are not very literate. It's a known fact. I'm sorry to say that. In the hinterland, they don't listen to English. So if they could break down the communication into our local dialect. Mm. But, we've got, it, but we've got many other channels. I mean, it's not everybody that's watching Joy News right now. There's a Doom TV. Yes, yes. But what I'm saying is that we should have one center of distribution of information. Mm. Okay. Because, because we have various various levels of information going all over the place. Even if it's drama or even cartoon, something that the ordinary man just from if it's thirty seconds. Because the information now there are some people are saying it's out there, it's not gonna to come to me, it's going somewhere else. I, I, it will never affect me. I've washed my hands. And somebody will tell you I cough all the time, so it's not a problem. Okay. We, are, we are dealing with an epidemic here. Mm, okay. And if you're not careful, the numbers will go up. Mm. Yes, we are praying, but let's be active. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clement uh, from Matahiko. Let's speak to Emmanuel. Emmanuel is in Kumasi. Emmanuel, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yes, good morning. Let's hear you. Yeah, my problem is that why is emphasis laid on... Yeah, good morning. Emmanuel, I see the problem. Please turn down the volume yeah. of your television set. My turn down the volume. Is why is emphasis laid on using a hand sanitizers. Imano, I'll give you some time to do the right thing and then we, we let's speak to John. John, good morning. Why is it that we are uh, laying emphasis on using hand Emmanuel, I'm afraid I have to let you go. It's difficult hearing you. Uh, can we speak to John? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Is this John? Yes, please. Okay, John, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Minahini in the Ashanti region. Okay, great. Let's hear you. Okay, my submission is that if there is a way government will roll out a policy that will test all Ghanaians for COVID-19, because I believe that most of us are, have come into contact in one way or the other with the patients of COVID-19. What makes you and say that? <laughs> what makes uh, you say that, John? Are you do you work in a particular place where you know you want to believe that you've come into contact with somebody who may have it? Not really. Okay. But looking at the uh, numbers now, I believe there is no more a vertical uh, 
uh, it is no more those who have come into the country from outside with it. Mm. Okay. Uh, but if all from. of us are tested and we those who those who will be tested positive for it are quarantined and treated, I mm -hmm. believe it will be a better thing for us. Okay. So ask for mass testing. The, 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 the. All right. Thank you, John. Let's hear something. Hello. Hi, Samson. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Let's hear you. Okay. Um, my problem is this. Um, in watching the sketches on the telly, mm -hmm. I can see uh, some of the banks and offices are closed. I'm wondering, why can't all these places be opened up instead of the market alone so that we can get all these things sprayed? No, I, I, don't, I don't quite system. get you. This is what I know. So the banks and offices that were closed are branches located within the markets, the, market. the market areas. Okay. Those were the only places that were closed yesterday. Okay, because that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Those places are being disinfected. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, those of, uh, offices within the market are still closed. I can't get those places in disinfected also. Okay, all right. Well, I'm sure uh, many others understand what you said. Thank you very much. Mensa is my next caller. Hello, Mensa. No, it's not Mensa. It's All me. right, let's go to one. Nurudin. Yes, please. Yes, Nurudin. Uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, please, I think the, uh, the spray exercise is very good enough, but uh, I think we are only uh, spraying the surfaces. But the traders will come back with the virus if they have it. And the infection will continue. So why not the government just institute at least 14 days uh, lockdown of the nation, and after which we all be free? Mm -hmm. No, as in, what, what, are you, what are you suggesting? 14 days and then the entire country should at be sprayed? At least 14 days lockdown mm -hmm. of the uh, country. Okay. And after which we all be free. Oh, <laughs> okay. That is it. Okay. Since the incubation period is 14 days, mm. you have a little days, about 14, we lock the state down. We'll identify those that are infected, uh, infected and treatment can be going on at the quarantine uh, centers. Okay. All right. No, yeah. Dean and what? Thank you very much for that suggestion. Yes, the All little right. that I know, though, uh, from engaging uh, over, over the last couple of days, not everybody who even has it will show yeah. signs or symptoms of it. But, you know, it's your suggestion. Uh, Jerry uh, in Bechim, and after Jerry, we'll, we'll come back and get some reactions. Jerry, good morning. Good morning. Yes, great to have you. Please go on. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking, uh, since the, the exercise has started from Accra, and agencies have come together to support, so him, so I believe we have... Hello. Yes, hi. Please go on, Jerry. I believe we have uh, an assemblies within Bechim, the Tunnel South, and we have police officers, we have military officers. Why don't we start hours here? Are we supposed to ask, uh, wait for people to come okay. here before we can do the fumigation? So, may, ju just before you go, let me ask you, have you witnessed, is, is there anything happening around your area? No, please. Nothing. nothing, nothing. Okay. So, no. I think as, as a country, we have to be proactive. So, mm -hmm. the best I think we can do is to Start here. Okay, thank you very much yes, for the suggestion. Welcome. Please, yes. over to you. Where is he? Bechim. Bechim, okay. The, as I said, the chief executives, the MMDCs, have started this already. And apart from the education and the awareness and donation of items, they are also monitoring whether indeed people are complying with the president's directives. That's how come you hear that. Some people were organizing church services mm. and they were stopped. And people were going to beach and they were stopped and all those things. Um, That's all the assemblies monitoring. That's from the assemblies? No, so just the compliance that um, the no congregation. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a funeral, it has to be 25 members. And then the, so the beer bars and all those places, they are monitoring. Of course, they are the the heads of security in the various districts and municipalities. So apart from, as I said, apart from education and awareness that they are leading, they are also monitoring whether people are complying. Mm. It's not been easy for them. Some, they have to send in the police to um, accost people to let them know that uh, this is a very 
serious matter. Yeah. So, and then the other aspect is the education and the awareness. Somebody was saying that we don't seem to be... We should have a, a, a one, central one central point of distribution, uh, distributing information. Minister, Minister of Information is doing that. But for us, in the districts and the municipalities, it's more to do with the Information Services Department and then the districts also getting involved to be able to give out information. But we have a lot of um, channels and platforms to be able to send this information to them, even if they are aware, so that they also carry them out. And this, we still need to do more. Probably um, sometimes too, people complain that now everything is coronavirus, coronavirus on mm -hmm. TV. Today is TB day. Today is the World Tuberculosis Day. Yes. They say on TV, we end up the whole day coronavirus, coronavirus. They end True. up looking for entertainment uh, channels because they think that it's a no-backing or overdose, mm. but we need it. Um, so we, we've taken some of the suggestions on board. Some are beyond us, like the lockdown. Mm. Mm. But I guess the, the information, the distribution yes. is crucial. Yes. Because if we have yeah. one central message yeah. instead of individual television and mm. radio stations yeah. coming up with their own education, if there's yeah. one big, which is regular, because yeah. if you go to the WHO website, for yeah. instance, yeah. I was yesterday I, I yeah. thoroughly went through the site. They've yeah. got lots of information, information. you know, Which, to arm any person yeah. who wants to get there and read. We have and to we use, need a lot. We have local. to use the mass media. Mm. You are the ones who can do it for us, even if it's part of your corporate social responsibility. Um, you have to devote some time and some channels to it because uh, it's overwhelming. Mm. And if we have to depend on Yes, one ministry to be sending out information. We not get to the point where we want to get. What's your take on the test all Ghanaians and the four, and the lockdown fourteen days? Somebody suggested fourteen days, uh, and 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 all of that. Well, well, as I said, a lot of people are in favor of lockdown, but we the government will be looking at it and the implications, and then putting in place measures to mitigate the lockdown. So if it has to get to that point, the government will take that decision. Um, sometimes it's a bit premature for anybody to say that that is the only way to go. Mm. The government is assessing the situation and when it gets to that point, um, as soon as possible, the lockdown will be the option. Let's, let's uh, read some of your messages and see if we can get some reactions. This one says, I'm happy our market women are by, uh, by the rules uh, made. Some, some actually call it fumigation, but it wasn't a fumigation exercise, was it? It's more or less disinfection exercise. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope traders in other regions would do same. Well, okay, this was a message that came a bit earlier. This one says, good morning, great work being done. I would like to suggest that the government goes extra uh, to ensure that the market men and women do not return to the market with the virus as yes. one may have the virus. Silvanus from Hohoi. I guess we should be clear. The exercise doesn't mean that the <laughs> people who work within the market are carrying the virus. Yes. Okay. So um, this one says, okay, let's see. More messages on WhatsApp. This one says, uh, the spraying exercise must be carried out across the entire country. Well, that's going to happen. If there will be any lockdown, it must affect the whole country. Mm -hmm. uh, let us be careful not to only concentrate on Accra mm -hmm. because people are moving from one part of the country to the other and can't know who may be a carrier of COVID-19 until the symptoms start showing gyms from uh, Klo Agogo. You know, the lockdown too can affect mass transportation. Mm. Yes. Yesterday, I, I was having a discussion with the MD for STC and Akumia. We were discussing the options. I was telling him on that, either you do um, social distancing, which means that if you carry 40 passengers, you may as well carry 15, so that there will be no space. And then why don't you even look at the option of increasing your fare a bit mm. so that you can... To make up for yeah. the less numbers that you carry. Yes, and also even provide sanitizers and facial masks if, if that should solve the problem. Mm. But that will only be for a limited period. Because if it's locked down, it means even transportation will, will be affected. Yeah. All right, let's... Uh, some suggestions. I support the session of Ghanaians calling for mass testing. Any small uh, failing like cold... Uh, Mm, 
the panic is too much that Pa Maxwell mm -hmm. uh, is sending this message. Uh, this one says, as the minister has indicated, lockdown is not an easy thing for a country where 80% of the people are poor. Why don't we try three days of compulsory steam inhalation nationwide to break the chain of infection, which is proven method to clear virus. This method is feasible because every Ghanaian village understand it and know how to do it. I don't know your background. Well, uh, the steam is steam in, 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 in inhalation. Uh, that's the suggestion Lockdown is that's like coming. Lockdown curfew. Yes. Right, curfew, and we, we all know the implications of curfew. If it's 24 hours of 48 or two weeks curfew, you, you, we all should be ready for mm. it. Mm. This one says that uh, uh, if it is not possible to have a lockdown, I suggest the government should think of placing a ban on internal travels, including internal flights for one week. That's yeah. from Karimo. Mohammed mm. from Tamale. Uh, here's another. He says, "I want to draw the attention of the minister to the fact that it's time we decongest our uh, decongest our markets and yeah. hawkers along our principal streets." Yeah. And I'm sure uh, he was part of the exercise yesterday and chanced upon the filth around our principal streets. Yeah. This alone can kill us yeah. before COVID-19 strikes mm. hard on us. Felix need, Yawo from need, Bema Camp sending this modern message. Markets. We need very modern markets and then um, cut down on it. Um, just anybody walking on the streets and then hawking, and then um, sometimes they leave in their tray so much filth and nobody is responsible for it. So, this one says, I suggest uh, when spraying the market, the various stores should be open so that we can have the effect of the chemicals. Uh, on inside. inside handles of the doors mm. because the door handles both inside and outside are the potential carriers of the virus Vincent Agbeshi mm. in Bono region I tell you what lots of messages mm. coming through many 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 suggestions uh, but there are so some very there's a commonality with yes. some of the messages in terms of mm. let's carry this exercise yes. uh, throughout the country yeah. and then People. my concern and I think mm. it's just what has also been mm. re-echoed because the fact that we did this parade People will go back there today and practice things that are unhygienic. So there should be more we'll education, more awareness, mm. and then let them know that it can hit them. And for a market, if it hits the market, we are all in trouble. Yeah. Because then the, the chain will be so long and huge that you can never tell who would have it next. So for them, they should see that they are very vulnerable in such situations and then find a way of also taking good care of themselves. So that it doesn't get to that point because mm. if you see people around you falling down and you should know that it can be your turn yeah mm -hmm. so what's that just finally what's the collaboration going forward because there are different ministries uh, mm. and then there's the mmdc's mm. that you control yeah. uh, so what's what's the in terms of what front <laughs> are we going with who sh where should we go to for what kind of information, essentially? That's what I'm asking. Well, information between Minister of Health and Minister of Information, you can get a lot of it. But for us, it's for the local government and it's for the district level. If there's any information, we get a lot of information every day from the district level. And if there's anything that we also need to let them know, or issues which have come up for them to respond. We have that channel. Except that for the national information, it's more of Ministry of Health and Ministry of Information. Okay. Mm. So people, because here we get a lot of people calling us each time. Mm. Somebody's feeling unwell. Yeah. People are calling our lines. Um, if it has to do with the districts, the municipal assembly. Well, we, we have a committee in place committee made up of the health uh, personnel, made up of the security agencies, the district assembly itself, and then key sectors in the district. If they have to speak to anybody, the DC will be the point. But the DC is in the capital. So it means that there should be the focal points could also even be those at the letter area level. Mm. And the letter area level you then have the assembly members. And these assembly members should also be equipped enough to be able to also 
relay the information mm -hmm. to and fro so that we break it down. But the media is the most critical thing because once there's a radio in the community, somebody can call anywhere, and then, then once the radio picks it up, it becomes easier to, to uh, follow up. Okay. All right. So this is what we're going to do in the coming days. We'll touch base with the assemblies to see what's going on. So yes. we, because we got calls from yeah. uh, in your name, yeah. the name, everybody yeah. asking us. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is not in Accra alone. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's important. Yeah. Sometimes you may even be in there. You mm. may be in your name. Yeah. Something may be happening, but yeah. you may not mm -hmm. be aware. Yeah. So we'll try and touch base with all the authorities mm. there. Yeah. Try and share with you what it is that they're doing yeah. and how their communication is also going. But we thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, too. Thank um, you. You're doing so well. Thank you. Yesterday I was really impressed. And we need to thank you. And I was just looking at um, those collaborating. Mm. And then it came out that it was all of the M's. The military, yes. the ministry, the mass media, <laughs> the market women, the mass prayers. Oh, could, yes. oh, oh. We, we, and then MMDCs, yeah. if you add it. That's so, very powerful. Yes. We should do that often. Yes. Because that, that, mm. that would get us. Yes seeing progress certainly yeah and then creating the awareness and providing education mm. and also letting people know that um, we are in very dangerous times these are not normal times yeah uh, the, elsewhere they are saying that they are at war but not the military one but with a virus and the virus appears to be ahead and they need to conquer it yeah exactly yes well certainly okay so we wish you well parliament Thank is you. back well, I mean, what's happening? Because you're <laughs> practicing social distancing. We see the speaker in a mask. What, what's happening to Parliament? Well, Parliament is still sitting. Yesterday, normally on Mondays we don't sit. But yesterday we went to Parliament. Um, we didn't stay that long. By midday, Parliament had, had closed. Today we were sitting in the morning. The speaker was saying that um, we still have a lot to do. And of course, in such times and situations, Parliament is the last place that you close. You have to do emergency laws. So are you doing conference center or you're That's doing what, your... As of now, we are in a regular parliament. Okay. The speaker is saying that he's planning for us to move to the conference center. So okay. we're hoping that if it happens this week, all well and good. But parliament, all things being equal, should, should end by the end of this month. Okay. All right. So let, let, me, let me just help you with what the speaker said. Please, don't visit your MPs. <laughs> These are not times to visit. Stay wherever you are. Uh, but why Stay leave home. your home or office when the news is available to you on the go? Download the yeah. Graphic News Plus from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Enjoy 10% discount on monthly subscription, 15% for three-month subscription, and 20% discount for six months and beyond. Graphic News Plus connecting people through news. Today, the world is united in its quest to combat tuberculosis. It's World TB Day. Roland Walker is on that conversation, and the theme is the spotlight is it's on true. urgently celebrating the TB the response. The theme is it's time. Oh, the, t the theme is not exactly that. It's time. It's time. So it's time. Let me get out. It's time. Stay with us. <laughs> And I hope that you did enjoy and get educated in that conversation. But it is now time for us to tell you another bit. And I'm sure you were told that today is Well TB Day. We're talking tuberculosis. And it's on the theme. It's time. The spotlight is urgently on accelerating tuberculosis response, especially along the fields of medicine, to save lives. Well, we're going to be joined on the, on the line by Dr. Yao Edusi Poko. He is a national tuberculosis control program manager with the Ghana Health Service. And um, good morning to you, um, Dr. Edusi Poku. But if we have to summarily put together the current state of cases in Ghana, how many and what is the current situation, would you say? Right. Good morning, Roland, and good morning to your viewers. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. Currently, 44,000 cases that Ghana has, but we are getting a third of this, which is about 15,000 cases as of 2019. 
what it means is that five persons are getting infected every hour and two persons are dying every hour. This is the state of Ghana's TB bedding. But the good news is that there's a cure. We have the best uh, technology to diagnose the cases. All that we need to do, that is why we have the theme. It is time forging forward to finding the missing TB cases. It calls on civil society. It calls on government. It calls on every individual to be partakers of this agenda to find the missing TB cases. Now, if we have to look at uh, a, a current world in, in which uh, we have cure for TB, what then would account for some of the fatalities that we tend to record? A high index of suspicion for this disease. That because they report late to the OPDs, there's a likelihood that they could be having transmissions or community to community transmission, so to speak, or uh, these patients, before they even reporting, could transmit to either families or members of the communities? And how prevalent is that? It is high. For every in this case, that's all we see. For people that we diagnose, they have, we have to trace about 25 persons around these people. These people may be household contacts. That's what we see, close relatives that the person may be placed with. So in the evening, he goes to play, for instance, drafts. He goes to drink palm wine with certain kind of people. So what I'm trying to say is that these people need to, because they report late, because they, we, we, we all live in communities, they tend to infect others. So we always say that once we diagnose a case, we also find out, we also go ahead and trace where the household of the person, where the person usually um, uh, uh, stays or, or, or lives, those that they are in close contact with, so can, we can screen them. Once we screen the risk of the disease, so we, we, we treat for what we call the latent TB. And so we give them uh, medicines so that we can clear the disease. Basically, this is what we do. Now, is there a case in point that stigmatization becomes a main issue then? How do you as health uh, practitioners tend to grapple with that? Yes. So it, that, that involves a, a, um, what, what we call huge counseling. You need to counsel the patient for the patient to believe that, look, TB is curable. The treatment has an entry point and an exit point. If the patient, most of our cases we get, we call them TB suscept uh, first line susceptible. You know, what, what it means is that the bacteria is susceptible to the first line of medicines that we give. And that one, it takes about six months for, for treatment to complete. Once you are treated and you are tested to be free, you are free. All that you need is to adhere to treatment. So what we are saying is that, yes, TB is, has a huge aspect of stigma involved with, in, with it, but you must believe that you will be okay after the treatment. And then we go ahead and cancel the relatives, some of them become what we call treatment supporters. They support the TB patient in taking his or her medication in the house. They give love to the TB patient. And so some of them are also volunteers. Mm. So these volunteers also help. That is why TB is a community disease. When TB affects one person, it affects everybody in the community because the mode of transmission is in the air and everybody is at risk of having this disease. Look, in 2019, we diagnosed about 15,000. If I should tell you among this, the professions, every profession is in, from the politician to the Army of to the to the soldiers, to the police, to the doctors, 
to the nurses everybody is in so everybody is at risk and therefore it caused that there should be hands on deck mm. if we look at the number of cases that we tend to record in sub-saharan africa i.e we're talking about ghana in particular how does that relate to the number of cases that are recorded in the more developed countries let's say in a developed country like maybe the uk or the uae of a sort okay so um ghana belongs to the high uh bedding countries if you have about 100 cases per, per 100,000 population onwards. Uh, 100 cases per 100,000 population and above, you are termed as a high burden country. If you go to the developed countries, because of their high surveillance in terms of border surveillance and all that, they are able to curb this. So, and here coming to Ghana, well, because we are also doing some high surveillance, but the stigma is so much that may call for the difference. Mm. In, in an advanced country, I, if I have TB, so what? But in a developing country, if I have TB, it is a big deal. But notwithstanding, we have to understand, and this is one of the philosophies of World TV Day. This time, we try to involve everybody. We tell everybody that everybody is at risk. And therefore, we must join. If you are living in a house where somebody has a, a long-term cough, somebody is taking a long-term medication for whatever reasons, we must encourage one another to visit the health facility for diagnosis and treatment. So, uh, at the end of the day, we know that this will be with us. Next year, we'll be back, 44,000 cases. It looks like we're not making inroads. And that will be an indictment on the health system that, or on the health system that we have. We, uh, well, I... I we, we are making a lot, a lot of strides now. There's a strategy, strategy in place now called the Spitting Transportation System. You know, because our modern technology, we have 126 gene experts in 126 health facilities, in 126 districts. You see, so we cannot be everywhere, but everybody is everywhere. Pardon me for my language. And therefore, there's a strategy where we want to create access, access to our gene expert molecular testing. And we are saying that, don't worry, enter the facility where we don't have our state-of-the-art machine for diagnosing TB. We will pick your spitting. Yes. We will transport this spitting to the nearest um, site where we diagnose the TB. Not only that, even if you are in the community, we have civil society, NGO groups, who are also canvassing and collecting spittoon, and then, I mean, flem, I mean, and then joining the speed, this transportation system to sites where we can diagnose the TB. And since we started late last year, we, have, we are getting a lot of cases now, and we also have about 48 digital x-rays in about 48 facilities where it helps in diagnosing TB. There are some people who are not having any symptom, who are not manifesting any symptom, and yet they have all the active disease. So we help, we use the digital X-ray to help us identify this, also these cases. So what we are saying, and all this is free, Roland, it is free. All that we are saying is that once you enter a, a facility, we screen you using our symptom screening tool. Mm. We collect your sample. Where we don't have the gene expert, we transport this sample to the nearest facility. It takes only two hours for diagnosis to be made. 
Well, we'll see whether we can make some great inroads. But th th these are great insights you're giving us, and we're very much happy about it. And that is uh, Dr. Yao Edusi Poku, who is the National Tuberculosis Control Program Manager with the Ghana Health Service. And because uh, we're treating this, we also have to put this into, into better perspective because today is World TB Day. And uh, we'll come to you uh, again, but let's just take you through the WHO site dedicated for this for today. It would give you great insight into many of the related things that you need to know. Uh, and of course, the main focus is to ensure that we all, as a people, especially in many of the low-end countries, and tuberculosis. Mm. We also do know that at least over 4,000 people worldwide lose their lives each day on this. We're just told by the Ghana Health Service that we have um, summarily an approximate 44,000 number of cases of tuberculosis right here in Ghana. And you go through the sites uh, where you can get all the related things. Um, it's a, a caricature, if not a cartoon, of uh, the theme for today. It's time. And it is to ensure that people get access to fully oral treatment for people with drug-resistant TB. Because that's the main focus of uh, the discussions today across the world. Indeed, it is said that uh, about 50% of people, especially uh, with HIV-associated um, infections, tend to be associated with tuberculosis because these are one of the opportunistic infections as they were. And, and, and so when you go through, you get many of these uh, so that we make the effort as a society to also remove the stigma attached to TB. Okay, now let's take you to South Africa. While well, schools are closed, children are home, some may have tablets, they may have things that they play with, uh, but how well can we control what they do? Some may have exercises, others may not. Maybe you have an old computer that's sitting at home. This is a good time to engage them doing some form of exercises. Uh, joining us via Skype is Kenston Tego, his vice president products at Rankad. Uh, there are some apps with some great content uh, that he's going to run us through. So the children at home can be appropriately engaged. So Kenston, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Great. So we've got about seven apps that you're going to tell us uh, what we can find mm -hmm. there. So maybe straight away, mm -hmm. let's talk about and let's start with the with the kids, the very the very young ones. Uh, where can we tend to, and what kind of activities can we engage them with? Okay. So here's the thing. Um, parenting is challenging, and now parents have to work from home. Plus, now have to set up a schedule for their kids. Um, because of the um, basically what the president gave in his announcement. So it's important that um, these apps that I'm proposing, um, parents do use them to sort of um, do a balancing act okay. and help them better take care of kids while at home. I'll start off with um, preschool and kindergarten okay. all the way to grade five. And that I will start off by giving a first recommendation, which is Tettle Diary. Okay. All right. So... Petal Diary is a great place for um, kids to start off by uh, learning uh, and it offers opportunities to learn through a number of techniques and resources. And it keeps the children engaged and motivated. And they also start uh, exploring new study areas. So all of their um, resources are structured as games. And the games are free. They are easy to navigate. You can learn in math. You can learn um, in language arts, science, puzzles, typing, and it's it's really exciting. Um, I uh, tried out one game, which is basically math problem, and as you get the answers right, your car uh, moves faster. So it's it's a very exciting place um, to start um, for kids. Okay. Right. Do you and you need to I be guiding also, them through? Yeah. Do you need to be taking them through every step, or you can just let the child be and they can explore by themselves? So uh, for this, it's purely about um, self-exploration. Parents do not need to handhold the child through them. Um, this is something that once you open on, on the tap or on your phone or on a computer for them, um, they just tap, 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 and then they ex it's an experiential learning um, okay. for them. Okay, great. All right, yeah. so this is uh, tetlediary.com. 
Yes, this is turtlediary.com. Okay. Uh, there, there, there is also uh, an alternative. Um, I'm not sure you've set that up, but it's also starfall.com, similar to Turtle Diary, and parents can use that as well um, for their kids. Okay. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about um, Nat National Geographic Kids, right? Um, growing up, we used to watch Nat Geo. Even now, lots of people watch it. Yeah. Um, but they have basically um, broken down all of the cool facts about nature and about our planets um, for kids. And that's available on natgeokids.com. Okay. So there, um, children can discover cool facts about animals, geography, science, nature, and history. Mm. Now, the goal that they set out to is to create a space where children can uncover curious creatures from both the land and the sea. Um, they can uncover ancient mysteries and civilizations, um, also incredible destinations and natural wonders. It's a great, great way for kids to explore on their free time and to also find out new fun facts about the planet. So, Fantastic. Um, not really something that is structured in learning, but mm purely for explorational um, purposes, kids can go here and learn as well. Okay, great. Um, then I'll go to those who are in um, high school, in junior high, junior high, senior high school. Mm -hmm. I'll start off with um, Khan Academy. Okay. And Khan Academy offers personalized learning. So basically students can learn at their own pace. And the content is available in math. So. You can literally take math from preschool all the way to GSS2. Um, there is also science, that's our physics, our chemistry, our biology. And then there is a bit of engineering, economics, computing, arts, and humanities. Okay. And all their content is free. So this is a great starting point for junior high and senior high school students who are back home now mm. um, for them to continue with uh, their study. Now, there is another which I really love which is context relevant um, in terms of Ghana and our educational sector, and that is ecampus.camp, ecampus.camp, right? So they offer a structured study material or content based on a Ghanaian educational curriculum. Um, so for parents who are concerned that all of the things that kids will be taking on platforms which are not um, basically um, locally, context, uh, locally con contextualized, mm. um, they can also go to eCampus and they can um, have the, their students in junior high, senior high take courses. Okay. So some of their courses range from math, social studies, English, all the way um, to elective math, core math, biology, literature, business management. It's it's really exciting. Mm. The and that's great bit of all this is they have a test prep option. So you can basically write a mock test online and it can help you prepare for B C or YC. Mm. And it's great for parents who are looking for content that directly uh, leads and uh, helps their children prepare for examination, etc. Great. Right. I was asking if this is also free. Um, so eCampus is um, not free, it's a paid platform. I believe a subscription for a course is 2 CD 50 pesos per month. Okay. So 2 CD 50 pesos per month for a course is is really good. Pretty cool. That's all I can yeah. say. All right. Okay, so let's do the rest. Okay, now for those who are looking to learn languages, uh, Duolingo is a great place to start, right? Um, it's a gamified learning experience. Um, so you learn a uh, new language, whether French, whether Spanish, whether Italian. Um, and whether you are a beginner or semi-literate or you are able to speak fluidly in the language, it's a great place for um, all kids to start uh, learning a new language and mm. to take it up. Okay. So that is for Duolingo. It's free. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I would go on to talk about Coursera. Now, Coursera is for the university students and uh, for those who are also seeking um, specializations um, in higher degrees. So it's an online platform that offers a what we call a mock, which is a massive online, uh, massive open online course. Um, it, of, it offers specialization, it offers degrees as well, and very, very ideal for university students and those looking to up their skills in a new area. So it ranges from engineering to healthcare to music, 
it, basically any course you can think about, they have it. Okay. Um, you can audit the courses for free, um, but some of the courses are paid, and also certification comes at a cost. Okay. Um, so this is a great place for university students to also um, basically um, continue their, their studies. Fantastic. I they, love it. This is all covered. Yeah. Uh, but yes. since you're coming, Kirsten, since you're coming from one card, one more thing before we wrap up. There are businesses mm -hmm. that are looking to innovate. There are people trying to get their businesses either online or find a way so customers don't physically go to their, their offices. Uh, what, what's the solution? Mm -hmm. Is there something they can do? Is there something that you can recommend? Yes. So um, here's the thing. Rankard is also feeling that lots of businesses are taking a pinch. And so one of the things that we put together is our con contactless uh, product ordering platform. So businesses can literally put up their products on Facebook Messenger, on USSD, and customers can reach out to them without having to walk into their shop. So you don't have to close down um, as a business. And also we have R2, which is our AI-enabled customer engagement platform, um, which enables banks and uh, basically mom and pop shops, any kind of business that wants to engage with clients um, to have that customer engagement um, during this time. Okay. Uh, so for those businesses, entrepreneurs who are looking to go online, um, what I can say is go to this simple form, fill in your details, I'll reach back to you, um, tiny.cc um, slash r2 order. So tiny.cc slash r2 order. You have to spell that. Details. Yeah, come again. You have to spell that. Okay, tiny is t-i-n-y dot cc slash R to order, O R P E R. Okay. So R and then a two and then order. Um, so just filling your rest, very simplified uh, details, we'll pick it up and we'll help you guys set up um, right from today. Fantastic. Kirsten Tegel, thank you very much. We're absolutely grateful for the tips that you've given us. Now it's up to you, parents. Let the, the children not be idle. Find something for them to do. We hope that we've given you enough ideas so that you can explore. Alternatively, get a multi-TV digibox. That's pretty easy. A multi-TV digibox. We've, we have a channel. It's called the Joy Learning. Joy Learning. And it's all about continuing what you've stopped, what you've cut, if you're a JHS student or an SHS student. So let's all explore. Stay with us. One more thing before we wrap up, and that's show business. Hello there, good morning. Let's settle for some showbiz here on the AM show. Now, Hip Life Grandpapa Reggie Rockstone has joined the campaign to fight against the COVID-19. Uh, the musician says as part of measures to help eradicate the virus completely, he has closed down his restaurant and staying home with the family. He also noted that uh, this is a time for all musicians to sit back and create more music. Thank you. Uh, that goes without saying, you know. But, you know, God works in mystic ways, and uh, we leave it to Jah. Uh, we get to spend quality time with our families now. Uh, you know, it's a it's, uh, quiet time. You know, you get, time, you, you get much time to think about much, and um, I appreciate that, too. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not it's easy. Yeah, I check a crap. But uh, it's a bad day. So, you know, we take it. And uh, we're more prayerful now. You know, family comes closer. And, uh, you, you know, we can really watch these kids grow and uh, also be safe. Yes, I did have some plans of putting out some music. Meanwhile, UK-based musicians Reggie and Bolia are advising that Ghanaians follow guidelines and directives to aid the fight against COVID-19. The two who revealed they had to cancel a show worth of thousands of pounds because of the pandemic say having life is the ultimate and so everyone must adhere to all the precautions. Yo guys, what's up? It's your boys Reggie and Bowley. Yeah. And as you know, we've got a brand new single out, Blessings. Yeah. I miss this whole pandemic thing happening. Yeah. Life is crazy right now. So many uncertainties, but we want to tell you to stay safe, stay home. 
if it's not really vital, don't go out, count your blessings, you know, spend time with the family, reflect on all the things that we take for granted. And, you know, just wash your hands, follow the safety precautions that you need to do. Have fun at home, watch it with the kids, with the family. Do you have to say something to them? Yeah, like, just like you said, you know, let's all stay safe, you know. We had a show tonight, but unfortunately, it had to be cancelled, and we're fine with it. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, Safety thousands plan. of pounds lost, but life is more important than money. So at the end of the day, we still count our blessings, even in these times, you know. 50 years from now, we're going to be... Mm. Stay home. Friends yeah, of Becky. Safe. <laughs> Life is more important. We hope that we've sent that message strongly to you now. Keep washing those hands uh, and, you know, just abide by all the precautions that we've been given. We thank you for watching our show.